thank you to the panel for your testimony. Um, it has been said over time that foreign aid is taking money from poor people in rich countries and giving it to rich people in poor countries. That's the criticism that's been leveled against foreign aid. Um, throughout time, there have been a lot of examples of billionaires in countries that uh, seem to have uh, converted somehow some of the aid or access to the aid or access to goods somehow to their own personal aggrandizement. Um, the Mubarak family is said to be worth 10 to 15 billion. Um, nobody's quite sure how legitimately that was achieved, but um, some of us would argue that some of it came from the 60 billion that we've sent them over the last 30 years. Um, what would you say to that statement, I guess, Congressman Colby, and uh, agree, disagree, and better or worse than it used to be? Absolutely agree with your statement. It, it, we would be lying to ourselves if we told, we tried to say that there haven't been examples of where our, our assistance has ended up in going into the hands of a handful of, of people in the country and, and enriching them. And you mentioned a couple, and that's certainly, in my experience when I was in Congress, I've seen that. In, that country, in those countries myself uh, where this has happened. I think that's the importance of what we're talking about here today is what we've got here are these public-private partnerships where I think we're not talking about, this is not a public-private partnership of Lockheed uh, or some, and, and nothing wrong with Lockheed, but just saying some major company that's selling huge numbers of aircraft to do you think we're a, Do you think we're a lot better, though, overall than we were 20 years ago as far as uh, you know, billionaire uh, leaders, dictators, despots taking our money? Uh, y yes. Do we have more as many despots? Yes, we do have as many despots as we have. But I think we're a little bit, we have a little bit better sense of where the money should be going. So I think we are in better. Going on to the point of trade and how we sort of improve the lot of people and do it in a, in a way that's mutually beneficial to the world. The uh, young man that burned himself in Tunisia that sort of set off the Arab Spring, there was a great article in the Wall Street Journal a couple years ago uh, from Hernando de Soda, I think, wrote it, the economist from Peru. I'm, I'm familiar with him, yes. And um, the point he made I thought was an incredible point. He made the point that um, if you look at the unofficial market, the black market of Egypt and of most countries, that it uh, exceeds our foreign aid like by 20-fold. It's just an enormous amount. And his frustration was really the man who burned himself. It wasn't a religious protest. It was that he couldn't get a license for his truck. You know, to, he wanted to become a truck farmer, which is actually what my family was when they came here. We peddled vegetables and then became truck farmers and then somehow doctors and other things. But the thing is, is that it was uh, that economic limitation. And DeSoto's point is that somehow we have to figure out, and I don't know that we can necessarily do that, but it's incredibly important for these countries if they want to develop, it's sort of uh, making the unofficial official, the black market, making it, bringing it into the normal market and letting it grow. But so much of that is bureaucracy and socialism and too much government, lack of title to your land, you know, our capital in our country comes from borrowing mostly against our houses. You know, that's the biggest form of capital probably in our country, that or real estate, it's not some kind of borrowing power. But um, I guess knowing or understanding that that's part of the problem, what are the solutions and are we closer to achieving those solutions than we've been in the past, Congressman Colby? Well, once again, uh, you, you are on the right track. You're, you're, you're absolutely correct. Hernando de Soto, of course, has made his... Uh, much of his name and the work that he's done on property rights in these uh, titles in countries like uh, Peru and then in, uh, in, in, in Egypt as well. Uh, if you don't have title to land, how can you sell it? How can you develop it? What can you do to it? So you need to have titles, and these countries have not had titles. So just something as simple as that, I think, is one of the key things. Before you were here, I mentioned that the key problems that I think we face in these countries is not often the, the problem of high tariffs, it's the barriers within the country to, do, to making development happen. It's the internal things that, that occur that make it impossible to start a business, the number of regulations that you have. I think Hernando de Soto identified something in, in Peru to start a small business that was 100, 179 or something like that different. Uh, approvals you had to have. And I just wanted to interject one quick point. Um, we do a lot, you know, with NGOs, with democracy promotion that you've talked about. But I, I wonder if we do enough with the promotion of uh, good economic sense. You know, the, the NGOs that do democracy promotion, I don't think they're really 
necessarily extolling Adam Smith or Milton Friedman, but I don't know that we do. It seems like those ideas are what hold back the third world as much as anything. The miracle in Chile was all of a sudden they accepted great free market ideas, you know. Um, it may not have been perfect, but I mean, there, are, there is definitely Chile still has, has done quite well over the time, but I wonder if there's a, a role somewhere um, for something, and I just didn't even see a private role, but for some kind of uh, group that believes in international trade to promote the ideas of, you know, tidal, you know, capital and how it develops so these countries would choose it, you know. I, just to conclude, I think there is the, a role for that, but right here we have the practitioners of the people who are in the country doing this on a daily basis, and, and that's the best antidote for the problems that these countries face.